The Scraps Book by Lois Ehlert. Don't read this book unless you love books and art. When I was little, I read all the books on the library shelf, and I thought maybe someday I could make a book. I was lucky. I grew up with parents who made things with their hands. Mom loved to sew. She had colorful fabric scraps, buttons, lace, ribbons, and many scissors she shared with me. Dad had a basement workshop. He gave me wood scraps and taught me how to paint, saw, and pound nails. So I had wonderful art supplies and tools close at hand. In a small corner of our house, Dad set up a folding table for me. It was my spot to place a place to work and dream. When I grew up and left home for art school, my table went with me. After art school, I worked in an art studio by day and worked on book ideas at night. I created lots of art, though not for books right away, but I didn't worry. Everyone needs time to develop their dreams. An egg in the nest doesn't become a bird overnight. Where do book ideas come from anyway? I know, I find ideas in the world around me. I've even found them in my garden or while shopping at the fruit and vegetable store. When a squirrel slipped into my house, a book idea walked right up to me. There he goes up the bricks on his claws. He steals seeds and eats with his paws. On a trip to the aquarium, while I watched colorful fish swim by, a book idea swam into my brain. I sketched it and made notes before it floated away. I keep my eyes open. An idea may be close by. Once, when I visited my sister, her cat brushed my ankles as he escaped out the door. A new idea. After writing a story, I sketched the whole book figuring out what to illustrate on each page. Back and forth, I work on the pictures and the words until together they tell the story. My art technique is called collage. I cut out scraps like pieces of a puzzle that I assemble and glue into place. I'm messy when I work. My wastebasket overflows. Scraps lie strewn all over the studio and more scraps stick, stick to the bottom of my shoes. But when ideas are flowing, I keep working. I often combine real objects with painted ones. I use odd tools to create texture. I spatter paint with a toothbrush or rub a crayon over my grater. Sometimes I photograph folk art from my collection to illustrate a story. I use what's close at hand, just as I did when I was growing up. Sometimes I go for a walk looking for good stuff. Mother Nature gives me a free art supplies. Day after day, I work until the art looks just right to me. You might ask, why did I choose to be an artist? I think maybe it's the other way around. Art chose me. If you feel that way too, I hope you'll find a spot to work and begin. I wish you a colorful life.